It's a clear evening day of March 6, 1987. At the port of Zeebrug in Belgium, MS Herald of Free Enterprise was preparing to dock after four hours of crossing the English Channel. Built at German shipyard and entered service in 1980 with Townsend Thorison, a ferry company based in Dover. Herald is one of three Spirit Class Row-on Row-off ferries, designed specifically with rapid acceleration for quick channel crossing. Normally, Herald ran on her usual Dover Calais route, but today, she was switched to Dover Zebra Run. When a ferry is about to load and unload the passengers and cars, a problem emerged. The loading ramp at Zebra was not designed for loading on both E and G decks simultaneously. To encounter this, the water been pumped into vessel bow's ballast tanks in order to load the vessel down enough, for loading at deck E can continue. Today, the ferry will be loaded with 459 passengers, 80 crews and 131 different types of vehicles for a return trip to Dover. Many passengers on board had taken advantage of a company's promotion, offering cheap trips to the continent. Inside the deck G, after all passengers and cars were boarded, the ship is ready to departure. But first, the bow doors need to be close. It's a job of assistant bosun, Mark Stanley to close these doors, but he got tired due to long working hours and cleaning the car deck upon arrival. So, he returns to his cabin to take a short break and suddenly fall asleep, not waking up until the disaster occurred. Also in Deck G is First Officer Leslie Sable, who already finished his checking and saw the bow door opened. Then, he was been called for, Harbor Station, meaning he need to be on his station at the bridge. Even though he was required to stay on deck to make sure the doors were closed, he was under pressure to get to his harbor station on the bridge. So, he had left G deck with the bow doors still opened, assuming that Stanley will arrive shortly and do his job. Also believed to be a last person on deck G is Bosun Terence Ailing, who again leaving the deck G without closing the bow doors. Later, he been asking why he not closing the door while no one doing it, he replied, it's not my duty. On the bridge, Captain David Lurie is unsure that the bow door's been closed or not. He looked down to the bow from the wheelhouse but unable to see these doors, owing to the ship's design. The bow doors used on Herald are clam shell doors, not visor door like other ferries of that time and without indicator lights installed to warn him about crew's mistake, he assumed that the doors had already been closed, and the ship rapidly pulled away from the port. Ninety seconds later, Harold accelerated the speed from 14 knots to 18 knots. Unknowing to the crews, the water starting to flood in deck G through the wide open bow doors. The ship's bow been low into the water, as they forgot to drain the water out from bow's ballast tanks, and with the shallow water of Zeebrug Harbor, causing the squat effect. It occurred when the vessel was moving rapidly in shallow water, creating the area of low pressure under the hull, pull the boat to sink slightly lower in the water. Even the water starting to pour in, the watertight bulkhead would prevent water from spreading further. Like others ferries of that time, Harold sacrificed them, for cars can come in and out conveniently, due to fierce competition between the ferry companies. Without it, it began to flood the entire deck and leaking down to other decks below, resulting the free surface effect, which destroyed her stability. Harold began to list 30 degrees to port in a matter of seconds, she briefly righted herself, before listing to port again and capsizing. The water then came contacted with electrical systems, plunged the ship into darkness. It was a bit of good fortune that the ship came to rest on its side partly submerged onto sandbar, prevented the ship from sinking entirely in much deeper water. The whole events took no more than a minute and a half. As the ship capsized, many were trapped inside, some were drowned, died from fall injuries or got crushed by falling objects in those first chaotic minutes. Some had escaped by climbing on the tables and smashed the windows to get out, with everything from their own shoes, to fire hoses. The alarm was raised at 7.37 p.m. local time, after the port authorities been notified. 
rescue helicopters were quickly dispatched, shortly followed by the Belgian Navy, who was undertaking an exercise in the area, and the nearby ferry, who arrived first at the scene. In the end, they rescued 346 from capsized Herald, but 193 people had lost their lives. After the disaster, the court placed the majority of blame on Assistant Stanley for not closing the doors, First Officer Sable for not making sure that the bow doors were closed, and Captain Lurie for leaving port even the bow doors still opened. Townsend Thorison also been criticized for on its working culture, for their sloppiness and negligence at every level of the corporation's hierarchy. Seven people from the company were charged with gross negligence and corporate manslaughter. But nobody was punished for actions contributing to the disaster. Nowadays, most modern ferries were now equipped with indicators on the bridge, to show if the bow doors were opened, water-tight ramps fitted to bow sections, the flaps to allow water to escape from vehicle decks in the event of flooding, etc. Regulations were also changed to require a greater minimum distance, between the waterline and any car deck of roll-roll ferries. For Herald of Free Enterprise herself. Well, after refloated, she was towed back to shipyard in Zeebrug to get some bodies removed from the vessel. The owner tried to sell her, but nobody wanted. So, she was sold for scrap. End of the story, and, stay safe.